Hello children, I am Trivedi Suresh Babu, Senior Trainer in Skills Edit Consulting. Today, let us move on to the next important ancient civilization, that is Chinese civilization. Before going to the lesson, let us know the geographical position of China in the world map. Now, let us know about the position of China in the world map. This is the world map. It lies in the Asian continent. Here, green shaded. See, you can see the green shaded part is the China. And in the here also you can clearly see that China lies to the east of India, eastern part of India. We have learnt about the position of China. Now let us learn about the Chinese civilization in detail. Mongolian tribes are the ancestors of China. That is the previous people or the ancestors of Chinese uh, Population is Mongolian tribes. They are yellow complexion. Yangtze, Kiang, and Hango are the important rivers of China. They are called the cradles of civilization. We have already learnt in the previous chapters that how the rivers play an important part in the development of civilization. So these are the two important rivers. That is Yangtze, Kiang, and Hango are the two important rivers which are called the cradles of civilization, the birthplace of Chinese civilization. Hango River is also called as Yellow River. It is called as the sorrow of China because often there will be heavy floods and takes the life of Chinese people. So it is called as the sorrow of China. Even today, there will be flood in this river. Initially, Chinese are the initial dynasties or the kingdoms, ruled villages, and gradually developed foreign trade by growing paddy and silk. Their agriculture flourished or prospered during this period. Now, after the after knowing about the origin of Chinese civilization, let us move on to the political history. Political history means which are the dynasties that ruled the ancient China. So, now let us learn about the dynasties one by one. Five dynasties ruled the ancient China. I will explain you one by one. Now, let us learn about the dynasties that ruled the ancient China. Shang dynasty, Zhou dynasty, Qin dynasty, Han dynasty and Sun dynasty. Sun dynasty was the last dynasty. I will repeat once again children. Shang dynasty, Zhou dynasty, Qin dynasty, Han dynasty and Sun dynasty. Sun dynasty came to an end when Mongolians conquered the China. Shang dynasty was the first ruling dynasty of ancient China. It ruled from 18th century BCE to 12th century BCE. That is almost 600 years or 6 centuries the Shang dynasty ruled China. The prosperity of ancient China depended on agriculture. They gave importance to agriculture children. They prospered or uh, there was a very much a development in the field of agriculture. Along with the agriculture, they mastered the craft of producing bronze and porcelain dishes. Long back, they knew how to make the dishes from the bronze and porcelain dishes. You might have seen at your houses, the China porcelain dishes will, you will be having, teacups, saucers and all, you will be using. Bronze is an alloy of copper and tin. So, they were, they, in this way, they pros, progressed in agriculture and the craft of producing bronze and porcelain dishes. Now, let us go to Zhou dynasty. Zhou dynasty ruled ancient China for a long time. Wu Ha was the famous ruler of this dynasty. Famous philosophers Confucius and Lao Tse lived during this period. Now, let us learn about Qin dynasty. Qin dynasty came to power after Zhou dynasty. The name China is derived from Qin dynasty. Now, let us move on to the next dynasty, that is Qin dynasty. Chiwang Ti was the famous ruler of Qin dynasty. He unified China and enforced uniform law. Because there were different laws in China, he united the China, vast China, and brought uniform laws. He was the, called the first emperor of China because he united, united the China and enforced the uniform law. 
he built 1500 mile long great wall of china to protect china from the enemies it is also called as one of the seven wonder of the ancient world so in order to protect china from the enemies he built this great wall of china he is now still also it exists in china after twin dynasty han dynasty came into prominence in china it is called as the golden age because all round development was there in china during this period wu te was the famous ruler of this dynasty that is han dynasty he established vast empire large empire foreign trade gained importance during this dynasty there was great demand for silk in rome and the route between the china and rome came to be called as silk route silk the trade of silk became so prominent children that the trade route between the china and rome almost came to be called as it was called by the name silk route buddhism entered during the han dynasty that means people of china were attracted by the philosophy of buddha and they adopted buddhism art and literature received great patronage rulers of china encouraged art and literature since there was all round development in the field of agriculture trade art etc it is called as the golden age of china now let us go to the last dynasty of chinese civilization that is sun dynasty peking was the capital of sun dynasty see during this period wood printing present porcelain of porcelain dishes started production of the porcelain dishes started in the period and wood printing press was started during this period now after the sun dynasty mongolians a tribal race conquered china and the sun dynasty came to an end so this dynasty saw the height of progress during this period because all round development was seen hello children now let us learn about the contributions of ancient china they introduced tea and silk to the world they were the first country to introduce tea and silk invented they invented paper made of bamboo even today bamboo is the raw material for the paper industry apart from that they invented explosives sporthakagalu from siri vattu pataki they are come under this explosives painting brush porcelain and marinas compass what is a marinas compass is an instrument which shows a direction in the sea and they introduced pictographic script pictures stood for the words they wrote on bamboo slips they made thin slips out from the bamboo and they wrote from top to the bottom vertically they wrote pictographic words lao tzu and confucius they enriched the field of philosophy they contributed a lot for in the field of philosophy now let us learn about the lao tzu he taught simple living he said that man should have a simple living based on sacrifice and he should have harmonious relationship with the nature today what we call eco friendly nature if we look after the nature if we are friendly with the nature nature will be friendly with us we should not harm the nature this philosophy was taught long back by the lao tzu confucius said he re established the last moral and social values because during the dynasty what had happened children there were no social and moral values he taught the people about the social and moral values and re established the last moral and social values in the society he gave much importance for the mor morality and social values which will help in the building up of healthy society